Please join me in our unison scripture reading from the Colossians chapter 1, verses 11 through 20. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully. Thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of his saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and in earth were created, things invisible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or powers or powers, all things have been created through and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might have come to have free space in everything. For in him the fulfillment of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile it into himself whether things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. I'd like to invite the kids forward for the children's time. Hello, hello. Alexa and Eliana and Declan and Matthew. All right, I have a, a magazine that I want us to look at together. Can you come closer to me? So I want you to be able to see the pictures. So this magazine is something I get for my, my mother-in-law who speaks Spanish. You have a, an abuelo and abuela que hablan español, right? You have, right? So it's, a, there's a, it's also, it's called hola, which means hi, hi hello, right? And, I, and I've kept this one because it is, I think, an historic one. It's, it's about um, the, or it has lots of pictures in it about the, um, the death of the Queen of England. But I was looking through this. When you think of kings and queens, what do you think of? Lords and gods, interesting. Royalty, castles, castles. right? So I was look look at this look at this house. Would you want to live there? No. no? That's too big. For me. Too big. Yeah. All right. Okay. But yeah, come here. Have a seat. All right. So look at. I was looking at this, going, man, look at that, and look at all the flowers. Do you like it? It's pretty but too big. Pretty but too big. Too much. You like it? You know, was, I was looking, look at this bedroom. Look at that and the dogs. Um, if it came with a dog, I would want to eat the more. I'd say that again? If it came with a dog, I would want to eat the more. If it came with the dogs, you would want it even more. I'm, yeah, right? But look at that. Look, and it's so funny because I was, I was looking at this going, oh, my gosh, this woman loves wallpaper. Like, the, the, for everybody, the, the walls are all murals, right? And then I went back to the beginning and it's this woman who has a townhouse in London who is the um, heir of the dynasty of wallpaper, of a wallpaper company. So that's why every, every room in this house has wallpaper on it. But I was thinking of, it's just, it's really, really pretty. And that's what I was thinking of when I was thinking of, of uh, royalty. And these are all pictures of... Rich is kind of royalty. Say that again? Being rich is kind of royalty. Well, you think of royalty as people having money, right? Yeah. Then they could buy a castle and have some royalty. Uh, they well, actually they inherit the castle. the The country owns the castle. They just get to live in it. But these are all royals. These are all people. Look at that. Whoa. Wow. Right. And these are all people. And this is the king of Spain, um, who's my age, right? Um, anyway, I lived in Spain when I was a kid, and. Anyway, he wasn't married then. A girl can dream, but it didn't happen. So, all right. So, but these are all royal people. That's uh, Reina Sofia. She's from Greece. Anyway, 
Um, today is Christ the King Sunday. And we think of Jesus. Jesus is Christ, which means he was um, anointed special. He was the, the Messiah, the one who would save us. We have all these different names for Jesus. But today we remember that he was, he was the king. But he was a very different kind of king. He didn't live in a castle. He didn't have a lot of money. He actually he, um, stayed at other people's homes. He walked a lot. Um, he had dirty feet. Um, and one of the last things he did before, before he died was he, he got on his knees and he washed the feet of his friends. And he says, this is what leadership looks like. And that's the kind of king that we serve, somebody who's willing to get his hands dirty, get his feet dirty, and serve other people. And that's who we, we, we celebrate today, somebody who loves us so much, right, that he would do anything to show us how much uh, he loves us, which you know, even die on a cross. But because of him, we know that death isn't the end, that we get to go to heaven, that we don't have to be afraid, all these wonderful things. But today we celebrate that Christ is king. And we get to choose in life who we're going to follow. The most important choice is when we, follow, is when we decide to follow Jesus. Can we... Um, oh, and I wanted to say this for the, for the adults, because I, I don't know that, that you all are care, will care about it. But Christ the King Sunday became a thing in 1925, so about 100 years ago, by Pope, Pope Pius XI in um, countering the power that Mussolini, who was, a, who was a world leader, saying, folks, the most important person that we have allegiance to is Jesus. And so Christ the King Sunday became a became a thing that we celebrate every year in 1925. All right. Can we fold our hands, bow our heads, close our eyes, and let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you have shown us what it means to be a leader and what it means to follow you. Uh, it's not about having a lot of money. It's not about living in fancy houses. It's about having a servant's heart and willing to love and serve other people. We are so grateful. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. And our second scripture lesson comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 68 through 79. It is called the Benedictus, meaning benediction or blessing. This is Zachariah's first words after uh, John the Baptist is born. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I listened to a podcast this past week, the story of a man who had a eye impairment, a vision impairment, and he could not see at night. He had no peripheral vision, and he could not see well or anything in bad lighting. He would eventually go blind, but he didn't know that as a child. He spent his childhood trying to hide the fact that he could not see well. A good friend of his growing up, without ever saying a word, just learned to reach out his hand, and he would, he would take it, and he would lead him where he needed to be. When he was in college, a woman who later became his wife noticed 
same thing, just reached out a hand and guided him. And eventually he confessed, and she encouraged him to be able to tell people, but it would take years for him to be able to do that. He just wanted to fit in. He didn't want to be any different than anyone else. But he needed help. I'll talk more about him later. Our scripture passage talks about shining the light in the darkness. And I looked for an, for an image for, for the slides, and I found this picture, the door cracked open and the light shining in, and it reminded me of this poem that has been with me throughout the many years of my ministry. It's called I Stand at the Door by Sam Shoemaker. It goes like this. I stand by the door. I neither go too far in nor stay too far out. The door is the most important door in the world. It is a door through which men walk when they find God. There is no use going way inside and staying there when so many are still outside and they, as much as I, crave to know where the door is. And all that so many ever find is only the wall where the door should be, where the door ought to be. They creep along the wall like blind men with outstretched groping hands, feeling for a door, knowing there must be a door, yet they never find it. So I stand by the door. The most tremendous, tremendous thing in the world is for men to find that door, the door to God. The most important thing that any man can do is to take hold of one of those blind, groping hands and put it on the latch the latch that only clicks and opens to the man's own touch. Men die outside the door, as starving beggars die, on cold nights in cruel cities in the dead of winter, die for want of what is in their grasp. They live on the other side of it, live because they have not found it. Nothing else matters compared to helping them find it and open it and walk in and find him. So I stand by the door. Go in, great saints, go all the way in. Go way down into the cavernous cellars and way up into the spacious attics. It is a vast, roomy house, this house where God is. Go into the deepest of hidden casements of withdrawal, of silence, of sainthood. Some must inhabit those inner rooms and know the depths and heights of God and call outside to the rest of us how wonderful it is. Sometimes I take a deeper look in sometimes venture in a little farther, but my place seems closer to the opening. So I stand by the door. There is another reason why I stand there. Some people get part way in and become afraid, lest God and the zeal of his house devour them, for God is so very great and asks all of us. And these people feel a cosmic claustrophobia and want to get out. Let me out they cry. And the people way inside only terrify them more. Somebody must be by the door to tell them that they are spoiled for the old life. They have seen too much. One taste of God and nothing else will do. Someone, somebody must be watching for the frightened who seek to sneak out just when they came in to tell them how much better it is inside. The people too far in do not see how near these are to leaving, preoccupied with the wonder of it all. Somebody must watch for those who have entered the door but would like to run away. So for them too, I stand by the door. I admire the people who go all the way in, but I wish they would not forget how it was before they got in. Then they would be able to help the people who have not yet even found the door or the people who want to run away from, again from God. You can co- go in too deeply and stay in too long and forget the people outside the door. As for me, I shall take my accustomed place, near enough to God to hear him and know where he is and know he is there, but not so far from men as, to, as not to hear them and remember they are there too. Where? Outside the door. Thousands of them, millions of them. But more important for me, 
one of them, two of them, ten of them, whose hands I am intended to put on the latch. So I shall stand by the door and wait for those who seek it. I'd rather be a doorkeeper, so I stand by the door. Isn't that outstanding? Groping in the dark, trying to find the latch. Sam Shoemaker was an Episcopal priest in New York City. He was instrumental in founding Alcoholics Anonymous, who helped shine the light for other people in the darkness, the darkness of the prison cell that is addiction. The image of the doorkeeper is from Psalm 84. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than live in the tents of wickedness, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. In our scripture passage, Father Zachariah, proud papa, delights that his son, John the Baptist, will make a way for the one who will shine light into the darkness. He proclaimed, by the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. We get to do that too, to point the way, to pave the path, to shine the light, to stand by the door. I think as Christians, sometimes we take for granted the gift that is faith in Jesus Christ who today we remember as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Or we can get so bogged down in the challenges of ministry that we forget why we do it in the first place. For those who opened the email, I sent you a song on Friday. Oh, the song is Oh Love by Elaine Hagenberg. And she took the words to the hymn, Oh Love That Will Not Let Me Go, and created this gorgeous anthem. It's got hundreds of thousands of views, and I'm at least a couple dozen of them. I've been part of a teaching team, uh, teaching pastors the art of transitional ministry, and I was asked to plan the closing worship. And I started with that anthem to remind the pastors why we do what we do, a love that will not let us go. In this class, we teach about the challenges of ministry and how to face them, how to orchestrate change, knowing that all change brings conflict and therefore how to help lead through that. Uh, We all resist it. How to minister to folks who have been traumatized, who are grieving ministry in 2022. And during the last class, students were asked to share their manifesto of how they were gonna take the, the teachings from this class and apply them to ministry moving forward. And one woman used the time to basically just tearfully, gut-wrenchingly share her faith. And the wind blew and the spirit breathes. And her her life is, I, I hope this doesn't offend anybody, it's a living hell right now, what she's going through. I I have said to people sometimes, you know, there is hell on earth, but just remember that we don't have to camp out there, we don't have to stay there, that we walk through it in faith, knowing that God is with us. And she told the story of her hardships, but her faith in the Most High God keeps her keeping on, praising God despite the darkness that she is walking through, thanking God for her calling, And I'm grateful to God for her, because despite the hardship, she stands by the door. As a young Christian, and even as an immature pastor, I like that young man, I relate to that young man that I spoke about at the beginning, who just wants to fit in. I was reticent to share my faith, uh, tell folks that I was a pastor. You know, this is a safe place to do it. But Lord have mercy how times have changed. I don't know how people are are doing this life without faith. I'm much more willing to put myself out there. You know, I'm I'm I can say you know I I'll say it this way. I'm a praying person. How can I pray for you when somebody shares with me what they're going through, or even asking the question, how are you keeping it together? Or for people who ask me, how am I keeping it together? I say, oh, God is good. 
I trust that God will give me what I need to make it through each and every day. And so far, that has proved to be true. And I want to say, praise God, laughter has returned to, to my house. We lost it for a very long time, but thank you, God, it has returned. When the Spirit whispers, and when it stems from love within us, people know it. Testify to how God is seeing you through. God needs Christians to shine light in the shadows, to guide people into the way of peace. Now, the peace that passes all understanding that, that I hope that you have experienced, that is a God thing. I don't know how to make that happen for people. You don't know how to make that happen. That's a God thing. We just testify to our experience, to our life and faith. We shine the light. We stand by the door. Hallelujah and amen. We get to do that. And now this morning, I need to tie this into stewardship. Today, not only is Christ the King Sunday, it's also the day we have decided to dedicate our giving for the coming year. And it all comes down, you know, why do we give? To shine light in the darkness, to testify to our faith that sees us through, to offer an alternative to the crazy, and because it gives us joy. There's a lot of good that we can do in the world with our money, but through the ministry of churches, our spiritual cups are filled so that we can then pour ourselves out in love to the world. I recently, in several weeks ago, I heard this quote that has stuck with me, beware of serving the bread of life with emaciated hands. We need to be fed in order to serve, and that's what we do. We're only able to serve because we are fed, and that's what we do here. We seek to feed souls so that we can keep on keeping on, praising God despite the hardships, testifying to the light that has shown us the way. And that work, that kingdom work, is worthy of our all and our generosity. And it's prayerful giving. Biblical giving asks us to give 10% of our income to God's work. Some people should give way more than that. Other people can't even give that. So it's a prayerful decision. Some will give all their benevolence giving to the church. Others will spread it out between different ministries. Again, that's a prayerful choice, a prayerful decision. And because our giving is a spiritual act, we all have a spiritual need to give, we're going to bless that spiritual act in worship. In a few moments, Dave is going to play for us, and we're going to pray. And everybody was, uh, when you came in, was given an estimate of giving card. We call it an estimate of giving card because uh, we have, in the church has learned that if you call it a pledge, some people, you know, despite what happens in their life, they might, well, I pledge that money, so I'm going to give it even if they don't have the money to give. So we say estimate of giving. You don't have to fill one out. Again, it's a prayerful choice. Um, in this, I was saying, um, you know, in the last two years, we have all learned, I, at this point, it's like, you be you, right? Some folks are wearing masks, some, some aren't. You be you. Prayerful decision. This is a prayerful decision. And you might not be ready to do it this morning. You need to pray on it. That's fine. You want to bring it back another week or mail it to the church. You might choose not to do it at all. Again, prayerful decision in your decision. But it is a spiritual act, so let's bless it in worship. Dave is going to play while we pray on it. And then at one point, I will invite you forward, and you are invited to place it in the basket. And you can place it face down so that so nobody can see. Again, it's a conversation between you and God. And then we're going to pray for the good that we can do with our, with our giving, with our generosity. We're going to pray for the lives that can be changed, the people who need to find a way out of no way the people who need to find the door. The end of that podcast that I uh, listened to last week with that gentleman who, who is sight, and, sight impaired, he learned to, that he needed help and asked for it. He went to a concert where it's dim, and he introduced himself to the usher saying, I am sight impaired. I need help to my seat. And she said, sure. And he put his 
arm on her shoulder, and, he let, and she led him to his seat where he stood the entire time and danced and sang every word. That is our hope for all whom we meet, that they might find their place in the fellowship of God, in the body of Christ, to, to find their spot and dance in their place and sing to their hearts and content their praise to God. We all need help. Others have helped us find the door. Let us, we get the joy and the honor to help other people find the door too. In Jesus' name, amen.